Good evening, everyone, and hello from the Hilltop. My name is Darren Montgomery, Director of Athletics here at St. Anselm College. I joined the St. Anselm community four and a half years ago, and during my time on the Hilltop, we have experienced tremendous athletic success, which we will talk about this evening. We are so excited to welcome 134 new student athletes here to St. Anselm College. Those student athletes, when they arrive this fall, will begin to help us build on that success. Each and every one of you, regardless of the sport you play, will be a huge part of helping the Hawks soar higher over the next few years. In just a moment, I'll introduce Grace Guacchione, a rising senior on the women's basketball team. But before I turn it over to Grace, I just wanted to, to say a quick thank you to a few of my colleagues who behind the scenes played an important role in making tonight's Zoom orientation session um, for recruited student athletes possible. Steve Gaish, while you might not see him, uh, at least for now, Steve is new to the Hilltop like many of you. He's in his first year as our Vice President for Enrollment Management. He's a big, big fan of Hawks Athletics. Uh, Sean Racine, my colleague in the Office of Admission, is hosting tonight's session for us. Thank you, Sean. And Griffin Spencer is our Sports Information Director and Director of Athletics Communication here for St. Anselm College. So thank you, Steve, Sean, and Griffin for all your great work. Speaking of thank yous, I do want to thank all the parents and family members who are joining us for tonight's presentation. I want the moms and dads to know that like you, I'm a parent. Um, our oldest daughter is starting high school next fall in just a few weeks. And like you, I understand that fall 2020 will be a little bit different for all of us. I also understand that sending your son or daughter to college is, it's a momentous occasion and it brings with it a level of emotion, especially during un uh, uh, uncertain and challenging times. Our coaches and athletic staff members, all of us, not just those on the call, we understand that you are entrusting us to take care of your sons and daughters over the next few years at St. Anselm College and to keep them safe. Uh, please know and rest assured that this is a commitment that we take seriously. I think our job as coaches, administrators, is to take your son and to take your daughter, those young adults, and to help them grow and mature and, and be successful over the next few years and doing that with tremendous coaches who are seeking to make them as awesome as they can be uh, through the sport that, that, that they love and that they are passionate about. I look forward to meeting many of you in the coming weeks and months, hopefully in person. Uh, but with that, I'd like to turn it over to Grace, who's going to introduce tonight's student athlete panelists. Hi, everyone. My name is Grace Guacchione. I am a rising senior, as Darren said, and a three-year member of the women's basketball team. I am from Pittsfield, Massachusetts, and I'm a business and finance double major with a minor in Spanish. Outside athletics and academics, I serve on our school's student athletic advisory committee as a member on the executive board, where a group of other student athletes and I meet and facilitate discussions on ways to make athletics on campus more inclusive and more representative. I am also uh, an alumni ambassador, so I work with our alumni office to help organize events on and off campus and reach out to our strong alumni community for their support. On the athletic front of my experience here at St. A's, um, these past three years, my team and I have reached some incredible and very memorable milestones. My sophomore year, we made it to the Elite Eight in Ohio after winning the East Region title. In the process, we knocked out three of our biggest rivals who were all ranked as higher seeds than us. I'd say that that three week stretch of the season was one I will remember and appreciate forever just because it was an unreal experience I was able to share with my team who is now like my family. Um, this past season, we were very competitive again, remaining at the top of our division, heading to play in the NCAA tournament as the three seed before our season was cut short because of COVID. But in spite of the disappointment and the sadness we all felt and still feel, um, I'm so proud of how my team has handled everything and how we're using this to now fuel our new energy and effort into this upcoming season. I couldn't be more excited to head into my senior year being a part of this team and this program, and I just can't wait to be back on the Hilltop and have the opportunity to welcome all 100 
34 of you new student athletes to this amazing place. I am now going to introduce two of my fellow student athletes that you will hear more from later on in this orientation. So Julia Hand is a member of the women's field hockey team. She is from Reading, Mass and is an elementary education major. She has been the starting goaltender for the nationally ranked field hockey program since her freshman season and has won 46 out of her 59 career games. She has 23 shutouts and also has only five, allowed five, goal, five goals sorry, in nearly 1,180 minutes played, which is insane. Um, Franklin Holgate is a senior member of the football team. He is from Easton, Mass, and is a psychology and criminal justice double major. Franklin was selected team captain as a junior and has 48 catches with five career touchdowns. He's led his team to defeat three of the top five teams in last season's NE10 preseason coaches poll. And now I'm gonna turn it back over to Darren who will introduce our other five panelists. Thank you, Grace. Um, I'd like to introduce two of my administrative colleagues and then two of our head coaches. I'll start with Sage Marie George. Uh, Sage Marie joined our athletic department in 2017 and in just two years, she earned a promotion. She's a key member of our administrative team. She oversees all of our NCAA compliance operations for our 17 varsity sports. She also coordinates team travel and transportation. Sage Marie, as you'll see in a few minutes, is fantastic. Next is Mike Searway, a, a veteran member of our athletic staff. Mike's been on the Hilltop for 15 years. Mike serves as director of sports medicine and is also our head athletic trainer. Uh, Mike has a charismatic personality. He's the fan favorite of many of our student athletes. He oversees a full-time uh, certified athletic training staff of five. Uh, we also have two full-time strength and conditioning coaches who are part of that sports performance group that Mike oversees. On the coaching side, it's my pleasure to introduce Keith Dixon. Coach Dixon has been on the Hilltop for 35 years. He's our head men's basketball coach. Um, in 2019, Coach Dixon led the men's basketball team to a historic run in the NCAA Division II postseason tournament. They reached the Final Four for the first time in the history of the program. Coach Dixon is, of course, one of the most decorated coaches in the Northeast 10. He leads all head men's basketball coaches with more than 650 career wins. But Coach Dixon's also on our call today because he's a parent of, of three children, two of whom attended St. Anselm College. Coach Dixon's son, Jeff, played men's basketball here, and his daughter, Michelle, was a member of the women's soccer team. And Coach Dixon will be here to answer some questions that our parents of incoming recruits might have. And then I'll turn it over in a moment to Joe Gagnon, the reigning two-time NE10 Coach of the Year. Coach Gagnon has guided our nationally ranked women's softball program to five Northeast 10 postseason appearances, three NCAA Division II tournament berths, and in 2018, led the Hawks to the school's first ever appearance in the national championship game. Jill also serves as a member of our athletics senior leadership team as an assistant athletic director. Coach Gagnon. Thanks, Darren. Um, so first off, welcome and thanks for joining us tonight. Um, I know your orientation experience has been a little abnormal and transitioning over to this virtual setting. So if there's one thing you'll learn rather quickly as you come to the Hilltop, it's that we in athletics are incredibly competitive and we hope that by the end of this webinar, you uh, can say that this was your favorite part of your virtual orientation. Um, I was asked to speak to you a little bit about what your experience might look like over the next four years. And as I was thinking about it, I really couldn't help but think about the past four years. Um, our athletics department as a whole has really taken this, taken this program to new heights. And, you know, four years doesn't seem like a long time. Um, and it goes by really quickly. So it's pretty incredible what we've done as a whole, not just my program specifically, yes, I've been fortunate to be coaching some great, you know, student athletes and we've done really well. But one of the things I'm most proud of is that we have multiple programs doing really well. And, you know, when I first got to the Hilltop back in 2012, we would talk about things like any 10 championships and conference playoff appearances. 
And that was kind of the end goal for most of our teams. And I can proudly say that now we spend time talking about NCAA regional appearances and even national championship appearances. So we've definitely raised the bar high. And um, with that being said, we know that, you know, like Darren mentioned earlier, we're, we're in some uncertain times and yes, campus will look a little different and athletics will look a little different when you come and join us here in August, but you should be excited because there are certain things that just will not change regardless of what's going on. And that's our staff's and department's desire to provide you with the best four year student athlete experience that we can. And uh, we'll do everything in our power to make sure that that happens regardless of factors that are completely out of our control. So I'm very confident that our coaches and our staff have worked tirelessly to really recruit the right fit. You know, you guys, our future Hawks here. When I think about our past four years and our graduating seniors of 2020, they really set the bar high. And now you all have an opportunity to come in here and really leave your mark. And if there's one thing you're probably going to hear quite a bit over the next four years, and it's already been said once on this call, uh, you have an opportunity and I'm fully confident that you all will help the Hawks soar higher. So with that being said, um, I'm going to pass it over to Franklin. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Franklin Holgate. I'm a rising senior from Eastern Massachusetts. Um, I'm also studying criminal justice and psychology here at St. Anselm College. Uh, the three key topics we'll cover during tonight's Zoom are athletic training, NCA compliance, and NCA life in the balance. Mike and the athletic training staff are essential to all 17 varsity teams. Sage Marie handles our team eligibility meetings and oversees compliance with NCA rules and guidelines making sure we're registered for the right, correct amount of classes. Julia Hand plays on the field hockey team as a goalie. She helped her team to the national championship game in field hockey this past season. She will share more about the life and balance and what it means to her. For me, at St. Anselm, I'm involved in different activities. I also partake in the Student Athlete Advisory Committee with Grace I also work with the athletic department, doing scorekeeping and recording games during my off season. Uh, before we hand it over to Mike Sarawis, please know that we'll have a question and answer session at the end of the webinar. Please submit your questions using the Q&A form at the bottom. And I'll turn it over to Mike. Thanks, Frank, <clears throat> I appreciate that. Hello everyone, I'm excited to be here tonight in this webinar. My name is Mike Searaway, head athletic trainer here at San Anselm College. I'm entering my 16th year on the hilltop and my seventh year as the director of sports medicine. As we all know, we'll be returning in a month or so to a different landscape than we're all used to. But I believe, that, but I believe in San Anselm College and know we're doing everything possible to create a safe campus environment and have a robust plan in place for the upcoming year in athletics. We've experienced sports, we have an experienced sports medicine staff who's committed to the overall health and safety of our student athletes. Many of our sports have specific athletic trainers who work closely with each team. However, as a staff, we're happy and willing to treat any athlete throughout the year, throughout their time here at St. Anselm. As I mentioned, things will look a little bit differently this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The athletic training staff will see student athletes for injury evaluation, treatment, and rehab in multiple training rooms throughout campus on a scheduled appointment basis through, the athletic training, through our athletic training system software and we'll continue to be at your games and at your practices. We'll continue to use an extensive sports medicine healthcare circle in the local community. We have a great team physician and physician assistant who will continue to share student athletes who, who need further injury evaluation, potential x-rays and MRIs and beyond. We also have access to other orthopedic specialists, physical therapists, chiropractors, sports nutritionists, sports psychologists, should we need to refer any of our student athletes to them. Our sports medicine staff also works very closely with our two staff uh, strength and conditioning coaches. We work in collaboration through the injury rehab phase and return, full return to sport. Uh, when needed, strength and conditioning coaches will modify your lifting programs based on injury needs and the student athletes, and, and they are a wealth of knowledge in their field. 
I want to touch base uh, quickly about the medical paperwork requirements by both the NCAA and us here at St. Anselm. Uh, most, if not all of you, uh, should have already received an email from one of the staff athletic trainers or your head coach about the annual medical paperwork. Our paperwork is separate from, and separate from the mandatory health paperwork from health service that health services requires. Everything is done electronically through our athletic training software, and you'll be asked to create a profile, complete the necessary forms, and upload our annual sports physical and any other physician forms into your profile. The NCAA requires the sport physical to be completed within six months of the start of your season. And we understand that this may cause some issues this summer, you know, getting into your primary care office due to the pandemic. However, the NCAA is not changing their requirement. So should you have an issue getting your sports physical, please reach out to a member of the sports medicine staff. And lastly, I wanna talk about what the college and specifically athletics is doing with the COVID-19 plans as prepa in preparedness. Task force groups meet weekly and sometimes daily, creating plans to make sure safeguards are in place. We will highly encourage every student athlete to self quarantine for 14 days prior to coming to campus. When they arrive on campus in early August, each student will be required to go through COVID-19 screening and testing before given their room code. Once the antigen test comes back negative, students will be able to freely move about campus. And we will continue to ask our students to use good hygiene, good hand hygiene, uh, do daily self-assessment of symptoms, maintain social distance, and wear cloth face coverings. In athletics, we will bolster the college's guidance by sending out daily screens for athletic training software for each student athlete to complete and daily temperature screens will be done before clearing an athlete for sports medicine appointments, lifting, lifting and conditioning sessions, and competition. We'll need to be diligent, understanding, and smart as we resume on campus life this fall. But I am optimistic that St. Anselm College has taken the necessary steps to maintain the health and safety of our students, staff, and faculty. Thanks for taking the time to join us tonight. And with that, I'll pass this back or along to Sage Marie George, our NCAA Compliance Coordinator. Thanks, Mike. Hello, everyone. My name is Sage Marie George, and I am the um, NCAA Compliance Coordinator and Transportation Specialist for the department. Um, I am the liaison between academics and the athletic department, as well as the NCAA and the athletic department. Um, and I handle all situations regarding NCAA bylaws, recruiting, eligibility, playing and practice seasons, and class registration and grades. Um, I also work with coaches to help uh, coordinate team travel to and from contests and any team trips that might occur. So today I'm going to talk about three things that are important for you to remember as a student athlete as we uh, move forward through the summer and get closer to uh, fall season and the beginning of the academic year. So the first thing I'm going to touch on is the NCAA Eligibility Center. So please continue to log in to your NCAA account and complete the tasks that are assigned to you. This includes submitting your test scores, your ACT or your SAT test scores, and submitting your final transcripts with proof of graduation. You should also have already requested final amateurism through your profile. Um, if you haven't, please do that as soon as possible. You need to be cleared through the NCAA Eligibility Center in order to participate in the fall, either uh, if you're a fall sport or winter sport or spring sport. Okay, second thing is your St. Anselm email. So your email account is active. Please log in and check this account frequently. This is how your professors, your coaches, and other St. Anselm staff will communicate with you. So it's important that you can get in and you know how to find your emails. Um, if you have any issues with that, you can reach out to our IT department or the help desk and they'll be able to solve any issues, okay? And then last is ARMS. So ARMS software is a program that we use in athletics to, to uh, sorry, to communicate with our students, our coaches, and send out important forms and schedules throughout the year. Everyone should have received an email to their St. Anselm email account with your login information for ARMS. Um, if you haven't done that, uh, if you haven't logged into your account yet, check your username and password, uh, please do that as soon as possible. Um, if you have any issues with ARMS, you can reach out to either your head coach or me. Um, I'm here to help. 
uh, with whatever you need. I'm a good resource for you. You can always uh, either submit your questions uh, using the Q&A function here or send me an email. That's the best way to reach out to me um, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. All right, and with that, I'm going to send it over to Julia, who's gonna talk about her experience on the field hockey team. Hi, so my name's Julia Han. Like Grace said, I am on the field hockey team and I'm also an elementary education major. So I was asked to talk about my experience as a student athlete and that brings me right back to the first time I stepped on campus as a freshman. I was welcomed not only into the community, but it was more like a family. Whether it was on the field or in the classroom, the Anselmian values become part of who you are. From holding doors to helping someone in need, it's ingrained in your being. This past season for me was one like no other. As the goalkeeper, I must work to overcome nerves, but the connection I have with my teammates is unparalleled. We made history multiple times. It started when we beat SNU 1-0 in the NE10 championship. We then went on to get a first round bye and were headed straight to the final four. We won this game in double overtime. Having the opportunity to play in a national championship was a dream come true. Although we lost, the support from the Anselmian community filled my teammates and I with pride. St. A's being such a small school allows for there to be a connection with every professor you have. The class sizes are very small and you become very close with the people in your major. As I'm an elementary education major, I'm in the Manchester School District student teaching. This has allowed me to make a difference not only in the classroom, but also in the community. Service and community work is second nature to most every student. I was, and I was able to take community outreach one step further by joining the United States Army. When I was considering this decision, my coach was the first person I went to. She's always believed in my full potential and she was nothing but supportive. When my parents sent me off to basic training, they were terrified, much like I can imagine you're terrified to send your kids to college for the very first time. This fear proved to be a driving factor in my success. I had so much support from my family, teammates, and professors, and I learned how to fire a weapon, hand-to-hand -hand combative, and push myself to my breaking point continuously. The more I pushed myself, the more successful I became. I learned how much of a difference one person can make in the lives of others. There were days that were extremely difficult, but in overcoming them, I grew as a person. Balancing my academics, athletics, and the Army can be hard, but it's all made possible by the support that St. A's offers. My experience in, at St. A's is unique, but all of your experiences have the potential to be just as impactful. You need to find the balance and push yourself outside of your comfort zone. St. A's will always be my home. Next up is Keith Dixon, the very successful men's basketball coach. Thanks, Julia. Um, uh, I was, uh, as Darren mentioned when he, he introduced me, I guess I've got a little bit different perspective because two of my children uh, graduated from St. Anselm. Um, so I'm coming at it both as a 34 year head coach and, uh, and a parent of, of two proud alums. Uh, but Darren wanted me to talk a little bit about, about the success of our program over the years. Um, and I guess it sort of begs the question of how you define success, uh, of which I think it's multifaceted. There's a lot of things that go into that. Uh, but winning games is one. And uh, I remember when I got hired, one of my best friends said to me, Keith, you just got to make sure that there's a bigger number on the left-hand side than it's on the right-hand side. And every single year when we get to 14 wins, I go to my wife and say, you know, honey, thank God. Now it's, it's just downhill from here. Like everything else is sort of gravy. I, I've sort of felt that way all the way through because, you know, if we think that uh, it doesn't matter, it does. It's, I know a lot of people that their number was way too big on the right-hand side and they're not in this profession anymore. So, uh, you know, I, I think uh, Jill said it too, in the, in the last six or eight years, our other programs have, now that they've been supported in a, in a much better way, have had much more success in the wins and losses than they did maybe through the first 20 years of, of my career. I've also been another one that uh, I want my kids to experience playing for championships. And I, I'm not apologizing for that. I, 
we've got a bunch of student athletes on this call. I'm assuming I don't have to apologize to the parents about this either. Is like, we want to win. And I want kids that want to win. And through their career w with us, it's like I make, make a big deal. They should experience playing in big games, meaningful games, uh, games that, uh, you know, ha have a, have a, reason to play and we've done a good job over that it doesn't matter to me if you win them all because you don't um but that you you're in the arena and you have an opportunity to win is important to me and those are the the kind of kids that we sort of try to get um but overall success is more than that i think and from the beginning when i was a young coach i wanted to develop a total program uh, a program that would sustain itself year after year, day after day, build a solid foundation where my kids could grow and get better and learn. Um, and, you know, w w we've, we've done that. So year after year out of all the things, you know, Darren will say, you know, oh, well, they played in the final four in 2019. And, you know, I'm, I'm more proud of the fact of what we've done over 34 years consistently uh, year after year. But sports is just, I've thought this since my children were little, it's, it's just another vehicle for life lessons. That any good coaches and any good sports team is teaching you about commitment and sacrifice and teamwork. How to handle success, which is difficult, and uh, how, to, how to handle failure, which is, which is hard too. But our job is really to prepare them for life after college. And during our recruiting process, I'll say to our kids too, it's, we're not pumping out NBA basketball players here. We never have. And, and our job is really to get them ready for what comes after it. I'm fortunate to, for 34 years, every time I say that number, I cringe, but to work for a college that educates the whole person. Um, so through our curriculum and through our philosophy, you're gonna get educated in ways you don't even understand, but you will be ready to do your job when you get out of college. You know, I've, I've said I've, my son graduated in, I don't know, 2004 or six, I can't remember. It's working for BlackRock in Boston and my daughter Michelle graduated, I can't remember, 2008, 2010. She's working for Boston Consulting Group and they have good jobs, they do their job well, and they were prepared uh, by our college. So which brings me sort of into the, the next group. You guys are sort of sitting here as recruited student athletes. You're not even at the stage of, you haven't even played for our teams yet. You haven't won a game or lost a game or caught a pass or scored a goal or you haven't done anything yet, but you will. And a big thing for me in developing a total program is the role that our alumni group plays in, in the success of our program. So you can just imagine, you know, with the majors that we have at St. Anselm, I've got kids that are lawyers and we've got a judge and educators and, um, you know, stockbrokers and, and, and guys in law enforcement. We've got all of them and they're, they're all successful in their own ways. And it was, I work real hard at keeping them part of the program because, you know, it isn't just you come and play for somebody. It's, you know, I'm working on relationships that are going on 35 years. The first team I had, I'm still in touch with those guys. And so you're part of their life. You're in touch with their families. It's, it's rewarding. It's just not um, about winning games. It's about so much more than that. This is, you know, is really just the beginning of your journey. I only coach one team. But I know now, just by observing some of these other coaches and watching their programs, uh, that we have terrific co coaches and terrific programs that are going to try to give you the total experience that you deserve on the hilltop. And then the rest of it is up to you. Whatever you make out of it, maybe you run away from it. Maybe you, maybe you embrace it. Um, but I will tell you the pieces are in place now with our administration, with the coaches and what our other programs are doing to, as Jill said, to help, I guess, the Hawks soar higher. 
Um, I wish you all the best of luck. I guess we're going to see you all in about six weeks. And I'm going to turn this over, I think, to Darren uh, for anybody that might have questions for the panelists. Thank you, Coach Dixon. Um, before I take the first question, as a reminder, if you'd like to submit a question, uh, you can use the QA function at, at the bottom of your screen. Uh, the first question is two parts. Uh, and the question is, when will we know if football and the fall sports will be played? And if student athletes can't play, will they lose their athletics scholarship? So I'll take the second part first. The short answer is yes. And I'm gonna introduce Steve Gaish uh, from the Office of Admission and Enrollment to talk a little bit more about financial aid. Uh, but in terms of the timeline for decisions for the fall, we remain very optimistic about plans for the fall sports, returning to practice and competition. I, by virtue of the position that I hold, meet frequently with the Northeast 10 directors of athletics and senior women administrators. From a timing perspective, I wish we knew today, uh, but we don't. The athletic directors are working on a recommendation to the Council of Presidents, which meets July 8th and again on July 13th. So we hope to have some more definitive answers and clarity about the fall. Uh, some of the seasons may be shortened or abbreviated in football, for example. We might only play nine or 10 games instead of the 11 with a bit of a delayed start to the season. But we wanna do a very good job of communicating these updates when they become available. Um, so student athletes and parents stay tuned on that. Uh, Steve, would you mind uh, jumping in on the financial aid and athletic scholarship question? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, it's very nice to be here with you tonight. Uh, so really quickly, uh, your financial aid, uh, that includes your merit scholarships you received upon admission, uh, any need-based aid, uh, any federal aid, and then of course, if you are on an athletic scholarship, uh, that's inclusive as well. Um, whether sports play in the fall or not, which as, as Darren indicated, there's a good chance that that will move forward uh, and they'll know hopefully soon. Um, but whether they play or not, um, all those scholarships are part of our budget for this academic year. Uh, so pending no changes uh, to our on-ground uh, experience, uh, meaning you would come to the hilltop and have classes, uh, your financial aid that you've been offered and awarded uh, will not change uh, whether a season goes on or not. Uh, so for example, um, some seasons, as many of you may have experienced, uh, were cut short this past spring. Uh, those student athletes that didn't get to play their full season in the spring, uh, they maintained all of their financial aid and their athletic scholarships throughout the spring semester. Um, so the short answer is no. Uh, and uh, you know, we look forward to having you on campus. If you have any questions about your financial aid, uh, I can answer general ones on this call. Uh, and then if you have any specific to your own personal situation, I'd encourage you to email uh, either the admissions or financial aid office, uh, and we'll get back to you. Thanks, and uh, I'll pass it back to Darren. Thank you, Steve. We're so glad to have you as a member of the Hilltop community. Uh, Steve didn't share this, but he's a big, big fan of all of our student athletes. He's fully committed to, to sports at St. Anselm College, and he's a friend and ally of our program. The next question, Sage Marie, get ready. Um, I'll pass this one over to you. One of our participants said that you mentioned and referred to NCAA amateurism uh, and registration. Can you please clarify? Absolutely. So um, one of the caveats of being a student athlete is that you are not allowed to be a professional student athlete. Um, so when you are heading into your first season as a student athlete, you need to answer some questions with the NCAA about your past experience with sports and competitions. Um, some of the questions are, have you ever received money for, you know, uh, participating in a race? Or have you ever received clothing items from a brand and they ask you to post pictures on your social media and those um, items? So when you log into your NCAA um, Eligibility Center profile, one of the tasks will be to request final amateurism. So when you log in and you head to that task, it'll bring you to the questions. Um, 
and the form you need to fill out for amateurism. I know that sounds a little scary, um, but most student athletes are cleared right away. Um, it's just one of the precautions that the NCAA like, takes. Um, if you have any further questions about that, please reach out to your head coaches. I am in contact with them every week about what your NCAA status is, what your open tasks are, and what you need to do. Um, so your head coaches will be able to assist you with that. I'll head back over to Darren. Thank you, Sage Marie. I have two questions that I will combine and I will answer them both. Um, the first question, head athletic trainer Mike Searway talked about quarantine prior to arrival on campus. I don't think those decisions have been finalized yet. We will communicate more about your arrival to campus. The other question is, when will our student athletes and students return? Um, I serve on what is a return to the hilltop planning team. I'm also on a subgroup for move-in dates. So I'd like to share these with you. Um, obviously, these are subject to change. But as of today, um, our plan is to have football student athletes and international students move back on August 8th. The remaining fall sports student athletes, approximately 150 student athletes, would move back on August 9th. The winter sport and spring sports student athletes on this call, you'll follow the path of all 550 incoming first year student and transfer students. And there's a little bit of, um, there's a little bit of back and forth on the exact dates, which residence life and student affairs will be sending an email to each incoming and returning student but we have sophomores slated for August 11th, 12th, uh, first year students coming back on the 13th and 14th. So if you're a recruited student athlete and you play ice hockey or baseball, a winter or a spring sport, you'll likely move back to move on to campus for the first time August 13th or 14th with the upperclassmen, the last to return on the 15th, 16th and 17th. Next question, can incoming students or student athletes get COVID tested prior to coming to campus and provide test results? If yes, what is the time frame for this to be valid? Those details are being worked out. The Return to the Hilltop team currently plans on testing all 2,000 students when they return to campus, approximately 200 to 225 tests per day. And we would quarantine those students for 24 to 48 hours while we wait for those test results. But again, those details are being worked out. They'll be communicated to all of you as first year student athletes. I'll give the next question uh, to one of our coaches. Why don't we start with Coach Dixon? Can you talk a little bit about your, one of your favorite moments during your career on the Hilltop, uh, Coach Dixon? Jeez. Um... You're not even saying biggest win. You're just saying uh, favorite moment. I don't know. It's it it uh, for us. I guess it's uh, one of the one of the biggest wins that we we had. Uh, and it's we've won nine Northeast ten tournament championships. So I hate to say this because a lot of my guys are going to be mad. But when we beat Southern New Hampshire at Southern New Hampshire a couple of years ago. Uh, I think it was 2017, we won the championship in their gym. Um, that was actually a pretty big moment for me. So that sounds funny because we've won bigger games and we've won games that probably were equally as uh, important, but that one has a little bit uh, special meaning to me, even at, at this stage of my career. Thanks, Coach. Coach Gagnon? Um, well, I won't, I won't give the obvious answer because everyone's going to say, oh, the going to the College World Series. But I think um, the series leading up to that, the Super Regional against um, the former LIU Post, um, we had all the odds stacked against us on paper. We were incredibly outmatched um, and no one really gave us a chance. And um, we end up winning it sweeping them and it was on our home field and the department did a really good job um, throughout the regional giving us a really good experience so um, I think getting to the World Series was the best part not actually being there.
Thank you, Jill. The next question, um, when will I find out who my roommate is and my dorm assignment? And then also, will I be permitted to go home and visit my family? Again, I am on the Return to the Hilltop team, which is a small working group going over all the logistical matters to prepare to welcome our first year students and returning students back to campus. It's being chaired by the academic dean of the college, the vice president for student affairs, and the chief financial officer. Um, the hope is that each student receive a notification from Residence Life in the next few days that would give you more information about your roommate and what the visitor policies are, both visitors coming to campus and then the permissibility of students going home to visit family members. Sage Murray, I will send the next question your way. The question is in, relate, in relation to COVID-19, can you talk a little, a little bit about the NCA's requirements for transcripts and certification? Sure, absolutely. So the NCAA realizes with COVID-19 that a lot of high schools have done different things regarding their classes and their grading scale, um, and also with standardized testing. Um, on the NCAA's uh, Eligibility Center website, there is a link that lists all of the new requirements for incoming student athletes. Um, some student athletes, depending on what forms they had already submitted to their profile, have already been uh, certified academically through the NCAA. Um, if you have not been certified yet through the NCAA, uh, based on the new COVID requirements, you need to still upload your final transcript with proof of graduation. So they just want to make sure that you are taking all your required classes, that you're getting the right grades and GPA, and that you are still taking your um, standardized testing. If anyone has have any issues with getting transcripts or your high school did something different with the spring semester or you weren't able to take those standardized tests, please reach out to your head coaches. Um, besides the changes NCAA has made to the general process, they've also put in a couple waivers that we can submit on your behalf depending on your situation. So if you have any questions at all about the NCAA Eligibility Center, your spring grades, amateurism, anything like that, please reach out to your head coaches and they'll reach out to me and we'll work to get you certified for the fall. Thanks, Sage Marie. I have a couple of questions that I wish I had the answer for, but I don't. Those questions are about roommates, um, student athletes arriving to campus. What do those 24 to 40 at 48 hours look like um, while we're waiting for COVID-19 testing to come in? The college is working with its medical services team and local health care providers on what the restrictions would be during that waiting period. And again, we'll be communicating now that out to all of our incoming student athletes and your family members. It's looking like we've captured most of your questions, but I'd like to hear from our student athletes. So I'm going to ask Grace, then Franklin and Julia to take a shot. You guys are the secret sauce behind our success here on the Hilltop. So can you share with us either your favorite place on campus or your favorite thing about being a student athlete here at St. Anselm College? Grace? Sure. Um, I think what it means to be a student athlete at St. A's, um, it means you're a part of a family. The second you get on campus and you're in the locker room with your team, you grow this connection and you make these friendships that will last a lifetime. And I'm not even just saying that. I know for me personally, these girls on my team are going to be my best friends throughout my entire life. Um, grow to be a leader on and off the court, on and off the field. Um, you experience things that a lot of other college athletes don't get the chance to experience or the opportunity to. For example, service is really encouraged here. And so my team, and I'm sure Julia and Franklin's team as well, um, we do community outreach regularly. And you're prepared not only to succeed in your sport, but also succeed elsewhere for the rest of your life because you're just pushed so hard and you grow up in this, com or you compete in this very competitive environment and you're just pushed to do your best in everything. I don't know, Franklin, if you wanna piggyback off that. Yes, like Grace said, um, 
being a student athlete at, on the hilltop is it's a family. Um, it's a lot of responsibility as well. Um, I think for me personally, it teaches you a lot of things about yourself, your character, your leadership. Um, Cause then again, you're kind of like the face of the campus. So everyone looks up to you. Everyone goes to your games, not just your family and your friends support you, but also different faculty members and different professors will support you as well. Um, to answer your second question, what is my favorite spot on the hilltop? It would definitely have to be the coffee shop. Um, definitely my favorite spot to go for late night meals, um, desserts, and things like that. And I'll pass it on to Julia. Yeah, I think for me, um, it's just such an honor to be on any one of our teams on campus. It's just like wearing that jersey getting ready for game day like that's just like an incredible feeling that you can never have after college so i think that every time you like go to the locker room to put on your jersey like it really means something like the number on your back really means something and i didn't truly understand that until i got to college and i think going with that one of my favorite places on campus is the locker room like it doesn't matter like who's in there maybe it's just a couple of your other teammates but like playing music, like getting ready to go step on the field, even if it's just for practice, is something like truly incredible and it's so important. Thanks, Julia. Uh, before we wrap up, I'm gonna turn it over to Steve Gage. It looks like in the chat, there were one or two questions specific to financial aid. Um, so Chief, uh, Chief, Chief Enrollment Officer, Steve Gage, um, I'm gonna turn that over to Steve and he's gonna provide his contact information and then we'll wrap up. Sure, so as I said, uh, if you have questions about financial aid or you're not hearing back from the office, um, there's a slide, uh, thank you uh, to our production team behind the scenes. You can email me directly uh, if you have any questions or it's been a couple days uh, and you haven't heard back from your financial aid counselor, uh, just copy me in on the email and I'll check in with them uh, to see what's going on and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So thanks, Darren. Thank you uh, to the production team as well for putting that up. Thank you, Steve. Uh, in wrapping up, I just want to reiterate how excited we are to welcome all of you here to the Hilltop. Many of you have been here on official visits and unofficial visits. For me personally, I'm honored to serve as the leader of our athletics program. Um, Believe it or not, my first day on a real job was July 1st of 1998, 22 years ago today. I texted my first athletic director this morning. It's actually his birthday. Um, I've spent time at Division I, Division II, and Division Three. And to, to kind of feed off what Coach Dixon said, um, St. Anselm College is truly a special place. Now, I know many vice presidents for enrollment will tell you that it's a beautiful campus and it's a special community. But of anywhere I've worked or lived, my family has been welcomed here um, and, and feels like a big, big part of the Anselmian community. And you might not know what the word Anselmian means. Uh, when I interviewed for this job, um, it seemed odd to me. But over the next few weeks and months and years, you'll learn from Grace, Franklin, Julia, Coach Dixon, Coach Gagnon, Mike, Sage Marie. You'll soon understand what it means to be an Anselmian. And we're so excited to welcome you to this community in 39 days this August. So thank you, everyone. If you have any questions, um, you can email any of our panelists directly. We'd love to hear from you. But thank you for your time. Have a great night. And go Hawks.